Hey everyone, welcome to Infosec Train. So the next one is that team. We have something called as a HSM or Hardware Security Module. The first point is that why do we have to use a HSM? Let me give an example. See, when talking about data, let's say we have a scenario where we're talking about data. I want to secure my data and one of the key mechanisms we use to secure our data is called as encryption. So what we're doing there, we are converting our data from a plain text to a cipher text. So there are three things involved as a part of encryption. One is we have a data which we want to encrypt. Then we have a encryption algorithm. Then we have a encryption key file. So what we're doing is that we are encrypting our data with the help of this algorithm with a key file. So if the key file is lost or due to any reason, if the key file is basically compromised, the whole data is also compromised. So basically when talking about these three things, this is the most riskiest thing which we have because if the key file is compromised or if we don't store the key file securely or basically if you don't take care of these keys properly, it can compromise the data. Plus, in fact, it can actually make the or the, even the data owners also will lose access to the data because the key file is lost. So that's why it's very important for us to protect the key files. So the device called as HSM or hardware security module is a specialized device to help us in storing and managing our encryption key files. So there's a question. So we have a software based key management systems a lot in the market. Then why do you have to go for HSM? So the first and the foremost point is the team like if you go for a hardware device for storing the key files, that improves security almost some 20-30% more. The next thing is that if you want to comply with the FIPS 140 certification, it's very important to have a hardware based cryptographic module. So unlike the TPM, TPM is basically integrated as a part of the motherboard, right? But if you go for HSM, the primary point to keep in mind is that it's a separate device we are having. In the sense means we can basically plug it as a, like a PCI Express card or maybe it can be a physical device like what you see here. So it's actually a physical device which we have. And what is the benefit of it? This device is actually a tamper resistant. It means that when somebody try to compromise this device or when somebody try to do a tampering for this device, what will happen is that the HSM will become inoperable or in response to the tampering activity, the HSM device can actually delete the key files automatically inside it. So in fact, what we do is that many HSM systems have a lot of secure backup systems. So, so basically what happens, the keys are actually backed up and stored in one more device also. So basically it's safe, but still what happens to the team, the HSM is a very important thing. Plus it's usually certified with the internationally organized standards like what we discussed in FIPS 140-2, etc. So the goal of a HSM device is to store the key file securely as a separate hardware. So that the advantage is that only that authorized people with the proper permission will be able to access the key file for either encryption or decryption. So basically what happens if somebody else tried to access, it can do a lot of tamper proof activities and have a lot of it. And of course, the thing is that inside the HSM device, there is a minimal OS is there like we have in Cisco iOS and all. We have a minimal OS which is completely focused on security. So basically what happens only the authorized people with the specific level of permission or only the authorized applications specific level of permissions will be able to access the device and one downside we have while using HSM is that if you go for a HSM device the one of the biggest problem that I felt is always the team it's a bit costly the device is costly and of course like if you only manage the whole key management of your company with only one HSM device what will happen if the device is trying to be compromised or if the device crashed or the key is deleted your data is also inaccessible so that is what we do is that we always have a cluster of devices to meet the redundancy requirements. And the key difference when you talk about uh, this HSM and PPM is that when you go for a HSM, we will usually what we do is that we basically deploy it as a PCI Express card or maybe some kind of USB keys or a, as a physical complete physical device, etc. TPM chip is always mostly always embedded on the motherboard. But if you go for HSM, it can be rarely it can be embedded. But still, basically what happens, its functionality is more extensive. Like we can basically store keys from multiple devices or multiple applications and which can be accessed by multiple secure applications for HSM. But if you go for a TPM, it's only focused on only one kind of device. In, in fact, I'll, I'll give an example. If you go for an iPhone, 
we use a TPM because iPhone is a single device, right? So basically what happens in Apple, we call it as T2, T2 chip. So like the same way, that is TPM is specialized for each device. Like for your laptop, you have a separate TPM with a separate RSA key. My, for my laptop, I am having a separate H TPM device. But HSM is a device we use for enterprise level scenarios where we need, where we have more functionalities like storing multiple kind of key files from multiple to device and all that's it.